Hi there, Matthew here, and I'd like to talk about language learning routines or language learning schedules that uh, uh, for learning and maintaining several languages. So, uh, the ones that I've heard of uh, are time-based, task-based, and uh, tier-based. So, um, a time-based language learning routine is going to allot a certain amount of time each day for language learning. So, probably the minimum amount of time that you want for language learning a day is 15 minutes. And if you go and read or watch anything from uh, uh, Professor Argullies on YouTube or anything uh, he's written before, he says 15 minutes is what you need for maintaining a language, 30 minutes for learning a language, and upwards of an hour for a language that's really different from your own. Um, I used to always feel that 30 minutes was enough, um, but then, I mean, I thought that, I thought that I had experience already with learning a difficult language, <laughs> Mandarin Chinese, and uh, I started learning Arabic on my own in September of last year, and goodness, I thought, I felt like I had experience with language learning and um, the Arabic was really different from what I thought it would be like and the language learning curve and um, people say that Japanese is difficult and uh, for me now I'm not finding it particularly that difficult uh, considering I already know <laughs> most of the characters or I'm very familiar with um, using, uh, you know, kanji or kanzu, yeah. So, um, but Arabic, I've been doing, I've done something like 45 minutes a day, and there was progress there, and then I, I did drop it down to 15 minutes for a while, or 30 minutes, and it just felt like it wasn't going, I mean, it was progressing, but it was very, very slow. Um, just in the beginning stages, it just takes so much focus to decode what you see on the paper, um, and then, or you hear it, and, and uh, some kind of change in the word, and it takes a bit longer to understand what, what you've heard. All right, so time-based schedules, right? Uh, so in general, a good 30 minutes for each language. Um, Task-based is more like... Uh, still probably want to spend time with each language during the day, but you do it as long as it takes to do a particular task. So, for example, in, um, let's say you've got a book, like, uh, you've got, you've got this book, um, teach yourself, and, uh, you open it up and you say you're going to do half of the chapter, or you open the chapter and, I don't know, chapter four? Uh, here on this one, <laughs> and you, uh, I don't know, you decide you're going to do four pages of it, or five pages, or you, you're going to look at it first and decide you're going to do 30 minutes. And let's say that you don't get to looking at this dialogue until 25 minutes. Right, and you say, I'm not going to stop until I finish translating or looking up the words in this dialogue. And it might take you up to 40 minutes then, but you just, you, you're not really keeping track of time, I suppose. You're doing it until you feel like you've done enough. Um, or if you are using uh, this colloquial book, which, 
this book is like it seems like the language learning method with this book is to just uh, look everything up in the dictionary in the back because we don't give you enough of the vocabulary in the glossary. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> if, if you, let me see. Um, yeah, so you get to that and and you decide I'm going to finish uh, analyzing that that uh, text before I'm, I'm finished for the day. Um, okay, or it could be um, watch an episode. Okay, that might be it for a certain amount of time, but that's what I'm doing today. Or I'm reading a chapter. I'm, I've got the little prints here and I'm going to read, I'm going to read five pages of the little prints. Okay, so you've got a task that's determining your workload for the, each language of that day. And it could be different from each language, right? Not necessarily based on time. Where I, when I'm studying, I go 15 minutes or 30 minutes, I just stop. If it's in the middle of a sentence in an audiobook, I'll either stop the watch, let it play a little bit longer until they're done talking about whatever, if it's not particularly interesting, I just stop it. And uh, if it's something like, uh, if it's Audible, like the audiobook uh, app, Audible, then I just pause it and it will remember where I stopped. If it's my music player on my iPhone, I'll do a screenshot so I remember where I was so I can go back the next day. So time-based and task-based. There's another uh, kind of... Uh, language learning routine or schedule that I've heard about from uh, uh, Rog McPherson and that's where you've ha you have different levels of importance. So you've got tier one, tier two, tier three, and he suggests that you don't have more than three tiers because you want something sustainable and uh, something you can stick with in the long term, right? So he's like, well, okay, I'll don't, this is months ago when I watched his videos, so I'm not going to quote him or anything. So, uh, so he, suggestion for this tier one is there's one language there, and you spend time with that language every day. Tier two, it could be something like two languages are your second priority. And it's not every day that you spend with them, but you spend like uh, three days with uh, Spanish. The next, so tier one could be Russian, tier two could be Spanish and French. So, uh, so Spanish you work on for three days, French you work on for three days. Tier two would be any other languages or any other hobbies, really. So you have a balance in your life, not just languages, right? So you spend time uh, with the rest of the languages when you get time. I tried this for about three weeks, and my tier one was German, tier two was Spanish, French, Mandarin. That's probably a lot for tier two. Um, but I had three days for each. And uh, tier three uh, had the rest. So. Vietnamese, Thai, Japanese, Norwegian, several more languages, right? <laughs> the problem was is that in those three weeks I looked back at what I did and I did a lot of the tier one and the tier two and then the rest of them was like almost no progress, right? Except for the Europe, uh, I guess, romance languages I was working on because they're so similar to my French and Spanish work. All right, so I found that what works for me is time-based. You just buckle down and you get up early and whatever you commit to, you do it no matter what. No excuses. And I think after my first month of doing time-based, where minimal 15 minutes of work sitting down with a language. If it's something like German, it could be 
I can listen to an audiobook, that's fine. But if it's a language that you're learning, minimum 15 minutes, sit down at a desk. God, it doesn't even matter if you're learning anything in the beginning. It just matters that you're sitting down with the book, focused. If you can maintain, if you can maintain concentration and every 15 minutes change to another thing, or um, I don't really even recommend it. I, people recommend splitting this up to several times a day. The problem I have is, is my schedule gets a bit, uh, I have other people in my life who don't feel the same way about languages. And they say it's a hobby. To me, it's not a damn hobby, right? It's something I need to do for my well-being. So, to sit down later on in the day is okay for me. I can do it. But other people sometimes get in the way, and it can be difficult to break away from family and start uh, working on languages at 7 o'clock at night. So, get up early. I recommend, like, don't start out with more than two hours of, of work. Uh, maybe even what I kept doing was I, I did six languages, all of which I had experience with, uh, 30 minutes. You can break that up so it's not three, 30 minutes at once. It doesn't matter how much time that you... It doesn't matter... Okay, what matters is that you build a habit with sitting down and concentrating. And you don't need to sit down and do it all the day, all every day. But what you don't want is to spend too much time walking around and listening. Because you really need to listen and connect it with what you're hearing, or uh, sounds with meaning that you're reading, or reading with meaning. And while you're establishing a habit of buckling down and sitting and working with books for about 15 minutes with each language a day, after that, you've got a routine established. You start experimenting with that routine. The problem that I had, and what most people probably have, is they're like, what's the best routine? What do I do? Or how do you do it? It's like the problem is not that you're, it's not that you're not doing the best routine. The problem is that you're not doing a routine in the beginning or to begin with, right? If you have time to watch these videos, which is videos approaching 15 minutes, you've got time to tick a language off your to-do list for that day. In the 15 minutes, you don't learn really anything, but it's the total of after a year of those 15 minutes. You've learned enough where you could, uh, you could sit down for a longer period of time, for a short period of time, as in more time a day, like an hour a day for two weeks, and you will, uh, you will have in increased your ability dramatically. Um, but fifteen minutes a day isn't going to get you far in the short term. In the long term, it will. So, um, stop making excuses and just collect the materials that you feel you can use for language learning and start doing it. You might want to try out a different a few techniques, but if you have a technique that you feel really works for you, then just do that technique and do it to death. <laughs> and just focus on committing to 15 minutes a day with each language. And after you know that you can control yourself, and you have the discipline for 15 minutes a day, then at that point, start experimenting, start seeing what other people are doing. Okay, now, <laughs> don't go watch other YouTube videos now. <laughs> go think about what you're going to do with your language learning routine. You know? Alright, good luck to you then. Uh, so, time-based, task-based, Tier based uh, three choices, and you could really mix and match them. So after you get to a good level, you could 
uh, withdraw from your stronger languages for a few days. It's fine and focus on your other languages, but uh, you, you do want to keep those languages in your life. So don't yeah, let too much time go by without spending time with them. All right, that's enough for this video. Thanks for watching.